For more on all this, let's bring in 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, you, I don't know how much of, of Agent Parker you heard, but she's saying we need a major overhaul again. Uh, you're suggesting that that even another overhaul wouldn't do it, right? Look, when an administrative bureaucracy becomes this corrupt, you cannot reform it. I think the right answer is you have to shut it down. And I don't think that's nearly as extreme as it may sound at first. You think about the local level, you have local prosecutors and you have local police. At the federal level, you have the DOJ and you have federal marshals, but you also have this intermediary institution sitting in between, that is the FBI. When you have an extra administrative agency, David, that is a formula for corruption. That is a cesspool for administrative rot. And now we've seen it, dating back from 1960, J. Edgar Hoover's FBI spying on Martin Luther King, trying to pressure him into committing suicide. Now, years later, going after Donald Trump in the other direction. That is part of the culture of this institution. And that's why as the next president, I think the right answer is to shut it down and to allow other law enforcement agencies like the DEA to continue taking on All its right. drug cases well, and fold the investigative arms talk, under the DOJ. Let's talk about how it got this way, because we had 9-11. And with 9-11, we all found out that there was this wall between the FBI and the CIA. Information was not being passed between agencies. Uh, they, they tore down that wall to, to give us better security. We created the FISA courts. But we just saw how the FBI was able to use the FISA courts to do political spying on their political enemies. So should we get rid of the FISA courts as well, another, another part of the Patriot Act? So look, I'm actually in favor of rolling back the Patriot Act and its vestiges entirely. That's a slightly separate point from the bureaucracy point, is that I'm not saying that shutting down the FBI is a panacea. It is just a necessary step in part of reviving the lifeblood of a constitutional republic. There's a lot else we're going to need to do as well. But I think if we're willing to take bold steps, we can restore a system of government with actually three branches of government rather than four, this unconstitutional, unaccountable fourth branch. And the FBI is an emblem of what's wrong with that administrative police. But it state. is a dangerous place. And, and we still have threats from places like China. Uh, Iran yes. may become nuclear soon. Is, do we have enough force and security to protect ourselves from those enemies outside of our country? Look, I think that it's really important to have federal law enforcement as well as actual national security protection. But I think that in many ways, we're failing to do that job well because of the politicized distractions. Yeah. Think about the resources that were spent on this probe. I mean, that alone is an affront to a Republican and a Democrat alike that this kinds of resources and attention of this bureau was spent on this hoax of an investigation. One of the things that's administratively messed up is that the DEA and the FBI pursue their drug cases separately. You think that's if more effectively helping us fight against the Mexican drug cartels or less? The answer is less. And so I think it's a false trade off between saying that we can't actually cause law enforcement to follow the law, but to say that we're protecting national security. No, I think those two things go hand in glove together. And that's what I'm going to restore. All right. Well, we're, we're talking about cutting uh, the government. Let's talk about cutting other parts of the government because we have this, these debt ceiling negotiations going on. The administration is, is resistant to any, any suggestion of any cuts whatsoever that may be changing now as a result of McCarthy and Biden talking together. Uh, but you suggest that whole departments like the Department of Education uh, could be gotten rid of. Certainly, you look at the track record of the Department of Education, where test scores continue to go down, despite the fact that we're spending more money than ever on that department. It, it seems to make sense. Right. The federal government should have no role in local education. That's an agency that now spends $90 billion a year, in part on foisting radical racial and gender ideologies onto local schools. So what I've said is we could shut that down. For less than 25 percent of that budget, we could actually put three armed security guards in every school across this country. And the remainder could actually be used to fund the supposedly underfunded school choice programs at the state level across the country. Mm -hmm. It's not even close, which is a better use of taxpayer money. But I think this is part of a broader overgrowth of the administrative state. As it relates to cutting spending, one of the things that they ought to do, be able to do, Biden ought to be able to agree to, is attaching work requirements to anybody who's receiving right. certain entitlements like welfare. And he agreed to it under Clinton. I, I can't see why I can't agree to it we're now. Gonna, we're going to talk about that in our next segment. But finally, I've got to throw this in here because a lot of our, our uh, young uh, produ producers here would like to 
to take issue with your proposal of changing the voting age to 25 unless you do public service or work in the military. There was a we had a guest on from Brigham Young on Fox News. I just want to play that for you and get your quick reaction. Roll tape. Sure. I truly believe that Americans and especially Americans who are my age should be more involved. But taking away the right to vote isn't the way that's going to get them more involved. I don't think magically by the time we turn 25, we're all of a sudden all knowing and that we are ready to vote. The point of having a republic here in America is that every person who's involved in our society should have the right to vote. And whether or not they use it, well, that's on them. I think forcing people to try to join the military, you're not going to see these disenfranchised voters all of a sudden running to go join the military so they can vote. Vivek, you got 15 seconds for a rebuttal. So you don't want to join the military, fine. Pass the same civics test that every immigrant has to pass in order to vote in this country. And I will stand by asking why it's a bad idea for an 18-year-old to know something about the Constitution before voting at a young age. And I think many young people actually are for this, but I'm glad we're having the debate. All right, Vivek, great to see you. Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, safe travels on the campaign trail. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you. While parents 